Today's lesson is on our geometric mean theorems. These theorems actually go in both the similarity unit, because we're working with similar triangles, but it also goes in our next unit, which is gonna be all about right triangles, because these theorems only work in right triangles. All right, so here's the basic rules. First of all, we have to be given a right triangle. All right, we need to understand that this only works with right triangles. In the right triangle, we're gonna draw an altitude, all right, down to the hypotenuse. So you're going from the right angle down to the hypotenuse. This doesn't work if you try to draw an altitude from the others because those are actually our legs. All right, so it's the altitude drawn from the right angle to the hypotenuse. When you do that, three similar triangles are created. And this picture here helps you see it. So we've got the right triangle on the left side. Okay, that would be triangle A, C, D. Looks like the C got cut off, so let's add that in our picture. We've got the smaller right triangle over here on the right side. So they kind of dropped the tip down. All right, and you can see that that would be then triangle C, B, D. And then of course we've got the larger right triangle and they just kind of flip the right angle down. That's triangle ABC. So that way you can see how all the right angles match up. And then of course they just showed a couple of the proportions that can be written. But one thing I want you to notice with these proportions is that these numbers right here are the same. All right, so this is what we call the geometric mean. So in this first ratio, CD is the geometric mean between these other two sides named. In the second one, side CB is the geometric mean between the other two sides named. And in the third one, side AC would be. Now, if I look at my picture, I notice CD, this is actually the altitude. All right, CB is one of the legs. And AC is the other leg, All right? And so these are gonna help us create the two geometric mean theorems that we're gonna look at. So let's look at the first one. It has to do with the altitude. This says when the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, the length of that altitude is the geometric mean between the segments of the hypotenuse. All right, so since the altitude's the geometric mean, it's gonna go in these two places across from each other. The segments of the hypotenuse, one of them is AD, the other one is BD. So you've got the left segment and the right segment. So when I look at this problem, just looking at the picture, I see it's a right triangle. I see that this is an altitude. I know it's altitude because the right angle's drawn there. So X is the altitude. They want us to find that. So I'm gonna set up my proportion. And the rule says the altitude is the geometric mean. So my X's go there between the left segment and the right segment. So one gets a nine and the other gets the three. Once I've got the proportion set up, I cross multiply. So X times X is gonna give me X squared. Nine times three gives me 27. All right, the way we unsquare is we take the square root of both sides. Okay, now we talked about this yesterday, or I guess on Friday, squaring and square rooting cancel each other out. So when I take the square root of both sides, this just becomes X. And then here we're gonna Simplify that, put it in lowest terms. 27 breaks down into nine times three, nine being my perfect square. So my final answer, square root of nine comes out, three stays in. So the altitude length is three times the square root of three. You will not give me decimal answers. We're gonna leave things in simplest radical form. Okay. That's the first rule, all right, concerning and finding the missing altitude. 
Now, the next one concerns the two legs. All right, so again, when the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, each leg is the geometric mean between the hypotenuse and the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to that leg. All right, so notice leg one. If we're referring to leg one, leg one's the geometric mean, so those go diagonal each other. Between the whole hypotenuse, and in this case, the whole hypotenuse is side AB, and the segment adjacent to that leg. So it's gonna be AB and the X. That's what goes in the other two spots. If we're talking about the leg on the right, leg two, then that leg is the geometric mean between the whole hypotenuse, AB, and the segment adjacent to it, which is Y. So that's why you've got AB and Y in those two spots. So looking at this first example, the Y that's given is a leg, all right? So that leg, which is Y, is gonna be the geometric mean between the whole hypotenuse. So we need to put the nine and three together to get 12 and just the segment that's adjacent to the leg we're finding. So the 12 goes in one spot, the three goes in the other, all right? It doesn't matter if you put the three in the numerator and the 12 in the denominator, as long as they're diagonal to each other. So when we cross multiply, we're gonna get y squared equals 36, and then we'll take the square root of both sides, and y will just be six. All right, let's do a couple more examples together. So the first example, when you look at the picture, you have to identify what parts are given or they're asking you to find. So they're asking us to find the altitude and then we're given the two parts of the hypotenuse. So obviously, since we wanna find the altitude, we're gonna go back and do the first rule, which says the altitude is the geometric mean between the two segments. One part is four, the other part is 25. Cross multiply, we get x squared equals 100. And then when I take the square root, 100 is a perfect square, so that just comes out to be 10. Okay, look at number two. I see the altitude, but they're not asking us to find it, nor did they give us that value. So let's start with X. X is one of the legs. So if I'm finding this leg, I need the whole hypotenuse. So I'll have to add those two together, which is 35, and the part adjacent to it, which is the 20. So that proportion, the leg is the geometric mean, so the X will go diagonal and then I need 35 and the 20. All right, cross multiply, we get X squared equals, and then that's going to be 700. When I take the square root, I'm gonna get X equals. Now, 700 is not a perfect square, but as we just did, I recognize 100 is, so I can do 100 times seven. And then when I take the square root of 100, a 10 will come out in the front and the seven will stay inside. So that was X. Let's see if I have another color. Now we need to do Y. That doesn't work too well. All right, so to get Y, I need again the whole hypotenuse, which I already have, that's 35, and I need the part that's adjacent to it, which is the 15. So when I go to do this proportion, the leg is the geometric mean, so the Y goes diagonal each other, and again, we've got the 35 and 15. Now, don't know where my calculator is, so pardon me while I do a quick 
35 times 15. Five twenty-five. So we're going to have y squared equals five twenty-five. Okay. And then I can break that down if I do the square root of both sides. I can break this down into twenty-five times twenty-one. And then the square root of 25 will come to the front. So y will be a 5 in the front with the square root of 21 behind it. OK, so you're using these two geometric mean theorems today to solve for missing parts. Now, watch carefully, because in these examples, our variable always was the geometric mean. But that might not be the case. There are going to be examples where they give you the altitude. And that number that's given will be your geometric mean. And so one of the other parts will be your missing variable. All right, so just follow the rules and check your work. All right, you should be ready to practice.